The next part of our engine overhaul on our Sparex TEA20 is we need to pull the sump off to give us access to the big ends, the, the bottom of the con rods and the crankshaft so we can loosen the big ends off and push the pistons up out through the top. So we can't just pop the sump off. Now if we have a look at the front here you can see a couple of bolts there and this is your front axle housing that holds your front axle housing on. Now if I zoom in there a little bit, there's a bolt up the top here. There's one there and there's one straight above it. Inch and a 16 spanner fits them. We need to loosen those off and take this bottom one out and same on the other side. And, and that lets this gap open up at the bottom here and lets us drop the sump down. So for the moment the first part of that job is pulling this screen out. Now this screen here it's got a pipe comes down into it from the oil pump and it, it's, a, it's a coarse gauze so we'll just pop the little nut gun on there and we'll rattle that off. It's a half inch spanner you need for that. And we're going the right way. They have a nut and a spring washer. That one feels like it's burnt over. Yeah, that one's a different size, don't you love okay. that? A little worn half inch spanner. Sometimes a worn out spanner comes in handy. But yeah, it's a different head size on that one. I don't know why. They're not normally like that. Yeah, we'll take all the washers. So they don't drop in the oil. I've already dropped the oil. Here's the oil, the oil plug here. Inch and a sixteenth spanner fits the oil plug. You've got an inch and a sixteenth spanner and an eleven sixteenth spanner when you're working on Ferguson's. You'll just about be able to undo everything. Yeah, we should be able to just try and do it near a stud so you're not bending the housing out here. So. So this just comes out, there's a thick gasket there that's available and that's a suction screen. This looks pretty good really. I've pulled them out and they've had a lot of rubbish on them. So look, that's, that's one of the better ones we've done. We'll pop that down over near the stand and a little thing that tells you what the motor's like is pop your hand up in here and you can get all sorts of goodies out there. Okay, I'll go and wipe my hands up and we'll start loosening these front bolts off. I've got two inch and one sixteenth spanners. Now, we don't want to take these right off, these two top ones. We just want to loosen them off and as long as you have them loose, mine aren't turning at the front. Sometimes if they're turning at the front, you need to get two spanners, but this one isn't at the moment. So with the wheels on the tractor, I've still got weight supported on these stands. And the weight of the tractor will just open that up a little bit. It hasn't got to be much. That's starting to turn, so we'll just put a spanner on the front. And back it off, say you've probably got an eighth of an inch or something like that freeboard. board. 
this little spanner here is a gee door with that with that angle here. Seems to be very handy for Fergies. And the bolt at the front here. It has to come right out. Because it's actually bolting into the sump itself. It'll give it easier for you to wheel the front axle out. No big deal. If you're going to do the timing cover seal or anything like that, I find it's easy just to pop the front out. That's turning there, Lance. I'm too busy talking. Yeah, it's just finger tight there now, so that's good. Now I like to put the nut back on the bolt just so it's there for us. Now if we come back around and look at the sump, We have a couple of bolts at the back here that go through into the bell housing. So there's, I think there's four of those. Then we have some long bolts here, all half inch head. Then we have half inch bolts all along the back. So we need to take all of those out. and run along the, all these sump bolts. So rather than bore you with that, I'll do the work. Oh bloody, geez, I'm good to you people. <laughs> but I'll do the work. When we're ready to drop the sump, we'll crank the camera up again and we'll just show you the process of getting it down. Well, you can see I've taken all the bolts out. I've taken the bolts out on this side here and there's two that are an 11 16 socket fit, so I've run right down the side there with a half inch spanner. And there's a couple of longer ones coming through underneath. And I'll just grab one of them just to make you aware of those. Um, often, if you're just standing up the side here and not laying underneath for a look, you can miss the underneath ones. So Make sure you clean the floor, have a good look underneath, make sure there's nothing there. Some of them get a bit corroded in, um, and that would be an example there. But they usually come off okay, and you can see the split washer. The split washer on that one's taste, but we'll probably put new washers all around anyway. I would imagine, for the price of it, it's just... Just worth doing. So, for getting the sump down, that's the right hand side. I'll go around the left hand side and um, I won't film that, but it's, it's the exact same thing apart from this um, suction screen. And we'll come back when we're ready to go down. But yeah, make sure you've got all these back ones undone. The two on this side loosened, the bottom one out, same on the other side, and all the uh, ones that are half inch spanner fits along here. You may find along here also that a socket, they're that close that some sockets won't fit over the nut. You have to use an open end spanner, which is what I did here. I've got a little snap on one here. And um, so I'll go around the other side. I'll get it ready to drop and we'll come back once we're, once we're ready to drop it down just so you can see the process. Well, I've been around the other side and I've un unbolted everything around the other side and the sump's been held in place with one bolt here. But what I wanted to show you here was, if we zoom in there a little bit, you can see the gap in between the front plate there 
and your front axle support. So the tractor is safe, you've got two bolts here, you've got another two bolts on the other side, so there's still four bolts holding it on, so that's no worries at all. We'll pop this up, pull out this last bolt, I mean, that crackling and creaking, that's my shed expanding as the sun comes out. So, so there's the sump down. And at this stage, I always like to have a look what's in the sump. And look, there's not a lot, just a bit of dirt and grime and things like that in this one. So I might be able to, if I pop back out a little bit, I might be able to give you a bit of a, bit of a look in there. But look, there's nothing out of the ordinary. There's a little bit of sludge up the front here. But we'll pop that out where it can't make any more mess in the shed. And that's it. That's pulling the sump down. We'll tidy everything up here, we'll clean the floor, and that'll do it for the video on getting the sump down. Just making sure you get all the bolts the, along the front housing. If I can zoom right back out again. On the front housing, there's three bolts going up. And on the back housing, there's four little ones going up across the back. There's two 7 16th bolts with a 11 16 spanner fits. And so, apart from that, it's pretty basic. The thing to remember is to pull the screen out. Your sump won't come down if you're pulling the screen down against this, um, this screen there. So, that sits in the side of the sump like that, over that pipe. So if you drop your sump down and try and lever it down, well, you're going to bend all this up or damage or break that pipe. So there you go. That's pulling the sump off the Fergie tractor.